Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at a way to improvise using something which is static and then something which is also dynamic. So when we combine the two, we get some interesting ideas that can be not only used to compose and improvise music, but these are also the essential tools for genres like blues, country, rock and roll and even folk music. Okay, so it's kind of improvisation with rules and whenever you have a few basic rules you can then go a bit out of the box as well but those basic rules ensure that whatever you're playing will stay rock solid so while developing our improvisation we are also going to improve our theory we are going to look at what essentially constitutes a major or a minor scale now you may be thinking a hey, major scale is just well, the way I see it or the way a lot of people see it, it's a major kind of scale or a major-esque scale. Now, a major scale is generally with respect to a specific triad, generally the major triad. And you can have a lot of scales apart from the major scale, which will work very well, wherein you can compose and improvise music very well over that particular triad or even a seventh chord and then you will have another host of scales which go very well across a minor chord or alongside a minor chord so what i thought in this lesson is we limit it to three kinds of major scales and three kinds of minor scales so there will be a lot of theory so get your books and your pianos out and do consider heading over to our patreon where all of my handwritten notes are waiting for you as a downloadable pdf it will cover all the scales all the shapes all the uh, the interval, so to speak, that we are trying to practice. Okay, so in a nutshell, the goals of this lesson is to make a static chord more interesting. It's to learn how to improvise using this specific technique of static and dynamic combo. You can use this to jumpstart your journey into playing blues, country, rock and roll and folk. And also, we will strengthen our music theory and also develop our years along the way. So, a lot of things are going to be covered in the lesson. Before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So, I'm taking two bass chords for you and from those bass chords, we are going to build everything. In the major family... We are going to look at the G major triad. So the question now is, which scales go with the G major triad or with the G major chord? G, B, D. You could argue G major, G mixolydian, and G mixolydian flat 6. Okay, I'll walk you through those other scales. So G major, 1 sharp, namely F sharp. What does Mixolydian do? Mixolydian will take the 7th degree and lower it or flatten it down a half or a chromatic step. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, knee is the flat 7. 4, 5, 6, knee, sa, sa, ni, da, pa, ma, da, re, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. That's major. Is, this is Mixolydian. Okay, and now coming to the Mixolydian flat 6. So, Mixolydian in music generally means flat 7 of something, of, of the scale. While flat 6, Mixolydian flat 6 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's also interesting to note that the G Mixo flat 6 is part of the melodic minor scale. It's the fifth mode of the C melodic minor, okay, just so you know. While the G mixolydian, it's the fifth degree or the fifth mode of the C major or the C Ionian scale. Okay, more on modes will be found in the description. We link you up with a couple of modes lessons. Anyway, back to the exercise. So if you start off with G major, the first activity for us in this lesson is to form thirds, okay? So that will be G, B, A, C, B, D, C, E, D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, A, and then repeat, okay? A third is basically formed when you skip one, which is your second, and then play the next one, which is the third. Thirds are also used to form triads. Two thirds will form a chord, G major, a minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished and G major. Your chords are formed with thirds. Even your seventh chords, G major seven, 
a minor seventh b minor seventh c major seventh d dominant seventh e minor seventh f sharp minor seventh flat five back even those are formed by thirds so thirds are used to form chords and they are used to compose music to play melodies to to harmonize and a bunch of other things and in today's lesson it will be to improvise okay and to spontaneously make music on the fly okay so taking the g g its third is b a its third is c b its third is d c its third is e d its third is f sharp e its third is g f sharp its third is a and g its third is b okay so we've also written it down in my notes so do check that out and moving on if you take the thirds from the mixolydian you're going to get instead of a major third from the 5 to the 7th degree you're going to get a minor third from the 5 to the 7th flat degree and then the mixolydian flat 6 a minor third between c and e flat and another minor third between d and f okay again you can check the notes so now that you have the thirds ready i'll tell you the strategy now on the piano it's almost like how a banjo player thinks i i would imagine okay you're going to take an anchor note an anchor note could be any note which is going to linger or continue or ring out throughout the the piece of music you're playing so in this case since it's the g major chord and the g scale g major g mixolydian g mixolydian flat 6 what is that one note which seems to be resonating with all of what i just said g right so g is my anchor and if i take the g major chord as my home or my starting base point this is the root position of g major chord and has the root note which is g at the bottom at the low position okay now just note that you can play this g even at the high position you can take the g from here and go to the upper g there so this is this is what we call as the first inversion or g could be in the middle it's the second inversion so there will be the same note but it will be in three anchor positions or anchor points it will be at the low position in root position it will be at the high position in the first inversion and it will be in the middle position or the second inversion okay and while we are at it we'll take the other chord of interest a minor the same story a minor in the root is in the bottom a root is in the high and then in the middle it's hiding in the middle right so this is where this is how the positions of the target note or the landing note are observed either bottom middle or high now based on that the exercise is going to move forward so if g is now at the bottom you start with your anchor chord or your main holding chord which is a g major and look at your chart of thirds Maybe we can start with some simple arpeggios. Do not move the anchor note or don't move the pivot notes. Just play an arpeggio. But what we could do is move the thirds. B D is just one of the thirds. So within the vicinity of your hand, you don't want to do something which is tough for the hand where it stretches too much. You can play around with these thirds. Maybe A C. with the g b d back to b d c e d f sharp so you get some interesting harmony as well so essentially your band band mates could just be playing g major but you could be floating so this could be very interesting accompaniment as well it could be so interesting that you know this could be the intro of a song
just by walking with the rhythm. Or maybe an arpeggio pattern. Okay, and you, you also don't have to be afraid of moving this G around. You can go to other notes of the G major scale, which it is right now. You could do it based on what you prefer. The whole idea is to keep that anchor note. That's the banjo-like technique. Okay, so now G was at the bottom. What if G is at the top? Pretty much the same. It's just that your anchor note will end up being the pinky. Start with arpeggios. And then maybe realign the accent pattern or the phrasing of the arpeggios. Maybe one, two, three, 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 one, bum, 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 bum. This is tough for me. So in some cases I might try. But you want to do it such that you're not straining your hand. It's within an octave. Okay, so that was G at the top. And then you have G in the middle. So G in the middle will be an interesting way of playing thirds in the sense, if this is the second inversion, if you just take away the root for the time being, you find that it's not B and the upper D. It's B and the lower D. So they are actually a sixth interval apart. Or if it was a minor third, it would now be a major sixth with this from D to B. Or we can even call this as spread thirds. Close thirds and bring that down an octave. Spread thirds. Okay, so keep your anchor G and then Okay, you're literally playing a C major chord with an anchor G here. But check this out you get this sort of a voicing where you want to still anchor the G. The idea is find that G, find the anchor point and just keep it ringing. So G is at the bottom. G is at the top. G is in the middle. Okay, so these are your options to play and improvise over the G major chord over the G major scale. Now, if this becomes G mixolydian, becomes a bit rock and roll if you ask me. You can do a little bit of a third slide there. doing that F sharp, I'm doing the F because it's mixolydian. So the thirds adjust themselves. That's the major and that's your minor. And they adjust themselves based on the scale. So for major, for mixolydian, okay, and then for mixolydian flat sig. You have that flat six in there, right? See, that's your major sixth. That's your minor. So,
Right, so in a nutshell, you have the G major chord as your home base. You're finding a scale to improvise on. So in this lesson, we've taken three major like scales. That would be the major, mixolydian, mixolydian flat six. And then we form thirds with respect to all these three scales. And then improvise by floating the thirds and retaining the static nature of the root. The root will not change. However, the position of the root, depending on the inversion of the starting chord, can be root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Okay, so to move forward, let's just try this out on the A minor and see where we go from there. Now, A minor would be your home base. What are all the minor sounding scales? First of all, you can do your natural minor. A minor would be the sixth mode or the sixth degree of the C major scale. And to form it, it has a flat three and a flat six and a flat seven. You can also do an A harmonic minor over this A minor chord. a normal 7 or a raised 7th with respect to the natural minor. Natural minor would be this, so you, we say we raise it to the 7th or else you can remember a harmonic minor as 3 flat, 6 flat and that's about it. Another minor scale which I'd like to sneak in, which is a scale I enjoy, is the Dorian scale. So that has a normal 6 or a major 6th or you can say the 6th got raised from natural minor and then a flat 7 and a flat 3. All minor scales will have a flat 3 and will work very well over the minor chord. You could even sneak in a Phrygian scale which has a very exotic sound with that B flat in there. Okay, but I'll stick with the three I gave you. My natural minor, harmonic minor, Dorian. Okay, now let's take the A chord or the A minor chord is the home base. A is at the bottom position. It could so easily be at the top position and it could so easily be in the middle position depending on the inversion. And then you can start improvising. upper third to the DF and then the EG and to access more thirds you can invert it by playing the A on top trying to also copy the thirds in my left hand. I think it sounds a lot more rememberable. And then A in the middle now. is to keep that ringing. You can get some nice lines, some very moving harmony. Literally moving harmony because it's not A minor for so long, you know. It's A minor with a, almost a melody going around it, you know. You can probably revisit the same thing with a different perspective. The perspective is given by different bass note. Okay, and then we can improvise or explore the harmonic minor perhaps. So... A 
may be A at the top. Okay, and then A. So, so this is your default position. First inversion. You could get a chord progression actually. You don't even have to know what those chords are. Well, eventually you probably should. Maybe an E sus4, D minor. So you also get a bunch of chords by just anchoring one note. Coming to Dorian. That's your Dorian note. You need to have that with a minor third. That's your major six with a minor third. Maybe A in the So we've kept the approach pretty much the same. Anchor the root, invert the uh, bass chord, major or minor. You have three uh, anchor points, low, middle and high. And then you just freestyle, improv or compose or whatever the word is. You could either look at it as a fast composition, which could be improv, or a slow improvisation, which is a composition. So... Have a freestyle approach, record yourself going, you never know, you might make some music which even you will forget because in the heat of the moment, anything, some art will come out of you. So try to record it as you go along. You can use a simple voice recorder on a cell phone, you know, which works completely fine. And you can then revisit these recordings the next morning and just see maybe there's a, a gem in there which you can find and use for a, a finished product for a whole song. So I would generally like to believe that this is an environment to be creative in and most of the musical environments you will find have some kind of rules okay so you need to start with a scale we have a chord we have an inversion well in this case three positions or three inversions and then we just float the thirds now how we float the thirds keeping the static root is your creativity so i think that's a very disciplined approach and whenever you follow that disciplined respectful approach towards jamming or having fun on the piano it ends up always becoming a finished product so to speak right guys hope you found the lesson useful don't forget to get the notes on our patreon page it's a downloadable pdf and do stay tuned for our upcoming lessons we release regular tutorials at the rate of twice a week and that's been going on for a few years now on our website you can reach our course advisor by filling up a form and we can customize hopefully a six month or even a one year or more than that that uh, semester which can hopefully serve your learning requirements right guys thanks a ton for watching the video cheers